12. Love this. And this is her, st I, I, I don't know if I've, I, I've done a few shows, but I'm not sure if I've actually talked about my ideas about voice. Uh, and it is a very sort of mysterious, obscure uh, uh, term. Uh, but sometimes you get to see it. It's, it's just right there on the page. You look at page 12, uh, the second uh, description paragraph. Uh, Juno looks up and meets eyes with her longtime lab partner, Bleeker. Sound the, gong, the, sound the gong of uh, awkwardness. Great. Just good, good stuff. Is it breaking the fourth wall and talking directly to the reader? Yes. But it, does it still work? Yes, especially since two pages before, we still don't know whose idea was it and how did they, you know, how did they end up having sex like that? It's pretty cool, right? Uh, on a chair. If you haven't seen the movie or read the script, they had sex on a chair. But read the script. Don't just take my word for it. Let's see. Ooh, okay. This is a little bit of voice, too, and, and also a, a little bit of brassness, and, and, and effectively so. Page 16. Uh, 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 Juno says, She lives on a Havana reservation in Arizona, and all we get is, Photo, Arizona trailer park. And she says, With her new husband and three replacement kids, Oh, and she inexplicably, inexplicably mails me a cactus every Valentine's Day. That's all you see. All you see is photo, Arizona trailer park, and two pieces of voiceover uh, dialogue by the main character. Nothing else. Pretty good. I'm just yeah. That's that's basically it. Does it work? Yes. Why? Well, my theory is um, elements of style. I don't know if you've read elements of style, but every writer, whether they're a screenwriter or a novel or whatever, should have a copy of elements of style with them. They should read it, read it twice, read it three times. In fact, they should probably read it every five years as a refresher, maybe more. But in the elements of style, one of the really awesome rules in that little awesome book is omit unnecessary words. Awesome. And in this case, photo, colon, Arizona trailer park. Do we need more? If you just think about it, Photo, Arizona trailer park. It, it's easy to picture. It's so easy. It's great. We don't need any more. We don't need to get into, oh, it's an Airstream and it's dented and there's tires and a wrecked car. You could do that. No problem. Absolutely. But you know what? For purposes of telling a good story as quickly and concisely and, and interestingly as possible, this does it. This achieves that. So something to think about. What else do we have here? Mm. Okay, let's go to 25, um, 25, 22, 25, somewhere around there is the act break. So we want to take the story in a completely different direction, something the audience didn't expect, but interesting enough that they've got to stick with it. They've got to either keep reading or keep watching the movie. How does Diablo do this effectively? Does she do it effectively? Yeah, actually, she does. Page 25 down at the bottom, we are at the McGuff house, her house with her parents there. Uh, Bren and Mac are seated on the couch. Bren is her uh, stepmother, and Mac is her father. Uh, Leia is standing nearby for reinforcements. Juno paces nervously, trying to suss out how to break the massive news. And in this scene, starting in 25, appropriately where, not only does she tell them that she, a, she's pregnant, uh, but also she is going to keep the baby. Wow. This is a 16-year-old girl. This is a gutsy move for, for storytelling. It absolutely is. And she did a great job of it, too. So, hey. So, remember, you're, you're going into your second act. Uh, do you have something as cool as this? Read the script. Is it good? I think so. Do you have something in your script like that? Well, you, you have to determine that. And this would, of course, would be the bar that you would set. At least that's what I said. 